right, this is this is making sense to me. I hope it's making sense to you. I think it'll be a little bit easier once we actually get into it though. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm wearing headphones because I couldn't be bothered doing my hair to make it look nice. If you're new here, my name's Ash, I'm 27. I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast. And on this channel, we do all things cybersecurity hacking. We learn together and bettering ourselves on our career to cybersecurity. On today's video, we're going over day 16 of the Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber 2022 event. And if you need any of the timestamps, playlists, or links, please see the description below. Otherwise, let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm on Try Hack Me. I'm gonna select Start Machine to get this one booted up. We can see day 16 secure coding SQL. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not good with SQL. I'm not like a mad programmer or coder. So it looks like Insider PhD is doing all three of these coding challenges. So awesome. And go check out the walkthrough linked there. So before we get into anything, um, the questions for this task, there are just simply four flags that we're looking for. So as we go through, we'll be looking for those flags and then jumping down and pasting them in when we find them. Okay, great. So deploying the virtual machine, make sure you've done that. Mine's already good to go. So let's get into the first section, SQL Refresher. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it's a traditional language used to ask databases for information. So SQL sort of looks at the database gets what we need and it's written in straightforward English for us to understand. So why am I like, I feel so scared of it. I always thought SQL is really difficult. So we're going to look at a database engine for the app that we'll be looking at called MySQL. And this is a relational database that we learned from yesterday, meaning it stores its data in tables. And I like this thinking about it like a spreadsheet. We have columns and rows, and we have an example here, a column of name, and then a row of like a teddy bear. So in this example, each row corresponds to a different toy and each column is then a field of data. So, you know, ID, the creator, name, description, etc. So as mentioned before, when an app needs to retrieve information from the database, it will need to build an SQL query. Queries are simple instructions that ask for specific data in a structured way that the database can understand. To query information, we use the select. So we can see an example here, select all from toys. Uh, that's a wild card indicating which rows of the table we want to retrieve. If we wanted to get all the columns from our toys table in our database, we could use this following statement. So as mentioned, this is our wild card selecting everything. If we need to ask for a specific columns, you could replace the asterisk with a comma separated list of columns. So name, quantity from toys. This makes sense. Why, why was I so worried about learning SQL? This, this, is, this is easy. And we see a screenshot of what that would pull out for us. So all tables rows are returned in both cases before, but you can filter those if needed using a where clause. So we still use the same select name quantity from toys, um, but this time where quantity is a less than or equal to, or it says here, at least the quantity of 20. You could do this for the following statement. Uh, sorry, that's greater than. So where the quantity is greater than or equal to 20. So in real world apps, you are likely to find much more complex queries in some cases, but what we've covered so far should be enough for the rest of the room. That's, that's all we need. That's just, that's, that's pretty easy. So next section, sending SQL queries from PHP. Now that we understand how to select, let's learn how a PHP app application builds and sends a query to MySQL. Although we are focusing on PHP and MySQL, the same idea generally applies to other programming languages. So first up, we always need to establish a connection from our code. So in PHP, we use a MySQL I extension, which provides a MySQL I underscore connect parentheses. This function receives the IP or name of the database server as a first parameter. So server variable followed by the username user variable, password variable, and finally the name of the schema, which is just an identifier of the database to which we are connecting. As a result, the function returns the connection handler, which can be used to send further SQL queries. Think of the connection handler as a variable that holds the connection information to the database so that queries can be sent to it. Uh, once the connection is made, we can use, we can issue SQL queries using the mysqli underscore query function. The first parameter we pass to the 
the function is the connection handler we got before. And the second parameter is a string with our SQL query. So we can see here we have stored select all from users where ID is equal to one. So that'll get us back if there's only one user that has the ID of one, we'll only get one user back. That's gonna save that in a query variable. Then we pass through that query variable with database, which is stored, that's our connection. So we always have to call the connection. So we're connecting through this query function, then it passes through our query, and then that's gonna be stored in elves underscore RS. Maybe that's just shorthand for retrieves. I don't know. As a result of executing the query, we obtain an SQL result set and store it in the elves underscore RS variable in our example. A result set is nothing more than an object that contains the results of a query. We can, which can be used in the rest of our program to access the resulting data. As you can see, it's all as easy as building a string with our query and sending it to the database. All right, this is, this is making sense to me. I hope it's making sense to you. I think it'll be a little bit easier once we actually get into it though. Next up, building dynamic websites. Okay, so now this is where things get interesting. If we check Santa's web application, we can access an ELF's profile by using a URL like this. So let's boot our virtual machine. We'll uh, connect to the VPN, quick test. We are connected. We'll just open up Firefox and we've got our web app just like the picture. So depending on the number you put into the ID parameter of your URL, you get served the profile of a different elf. And we can see that by just changing two to three, we have indeed switched user IDs. Behind the curtains, this works by creating an SQL query that embeds the ID parameter value and returns the information of a corresponding. So we can see this nice puzzle pieces, we our query there, and then changing that last input. So the code actually looks like this select from users where the ID is and we have a variable here which ID. So the first line builds an SQL query by concatenating the variable as part of the where clause. Note that in PHP you can access any parameter in the URL as name of parameter. This query will ask the database for all columns of the table users that corresponds to the ELF with a specific ID. The second line sends the query and returns the information of a particular elf as a result that we store in the elves underscore rs. The rest of the website then passes the result set and renders the page accordingly. Okay, so this still confuses me a little bit. Hopefully it's going to make a little bit more sense as we go through. If you test the website, you can see that it works as expected. You have, however, introduced an SQL injection vulnerability in your code that could allow an attacker to dump your whole database. Next up, SQL injection, SQL so the problem with the method shown before is that it takes untrusted input from the user and concatenates it in the SQL query without any questions asked. As seen in the previous day's task, our app should thoroughly validate any input the user sends before using it. If it doesn't, unexpected things may happen. In the case of SQL and our example, an attacker can send SQL syntax through one of the various parameters of the app's URLs, which might end up being concatenated to the same SQL query in code, potentially changing its intended purpose. Let's get back to the ELF's profile page, which is number two. To understand this better, remember the app application is creating a query by concatenating whatever is sent in the ID parameter as part of the where clause. So that's shown here. If the attacker sends the following through the ID parameter of ID equals negative one or ID equals four, when PHP concatenates negative one or ID four to our SQL statement, it will end up with this query. Yeah, okay, uh, let's try that. Negative one, capital or ID, but this time it's got spaces. I'm not sure if that really matters, but I'll just type it out exactly. So suddenly the attacker has injected some SQL syntax that when concatenated to our original query, the data of ALF with ID of four for some weird reason. If we read the resulting query string, we can see that our where clause was modified to filter only the elves that either have ID underscore one or ID four. Since the ID values used by the database are likely all positive numbers, no elf will match ID of negative one. Therefore, the database will only return the elf with ID four. So while this example shows a harmless injection, a skilled attacker can try to get your server to run much more complex SQL queries and potentially force 
the database to return any data of any table they want. Just an example, look at what happens when you put the following ID parameter in. So let's have a look at this one. We've got ID equals negative one union all select null null username password null 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 from users. Uh, okay, let's uh, copy that, paste it into our VM. And now we can see what I'm assuming are the passwords and even of the admin. So how the heck does that work? So we've got select username and password from all the users. I'm not sure why the whole nulls are there, but heck, all right, that's kind of wild. So the SQL injected will make the database return all the users and passwords of the application. If you're interested in learning more about SQL injection from attacker's perspective, check out the SQL injection room. So for the rest of the task, we'll focus on the defensive side and look at ways to prevent SQL injections in our code. So don't worry too much about if the above URL looks hard to understand. So next section, fixing the app with elf exploit and elf admin. So armed with this knowledge, we're ready to fix the app. You'll have access to a simple editor to modify your app resource code during this task. Any changes you make to the editor will go live instantly as long as you save your changes by hitting control S. If you're using the VPN connection, you can access the code editor from any browser of your preference. Cool, so let's go ahead and go to that and we can use the coder coder credentials. Cool, this is this is different from other try hack rooms. I like this. So in addition to the code editor, you will have access to a chat to communicate with Alf exploit. Okay, so that's down the bottom here. So it's like a little chat bot, cool. And Alf admin. While they don't speak too much, you can request them to check the application for you. If you remember correctly, they don't know a thing about coding. However, Alf exploit will help you identify parts of the app that are vulnerable to SQLi. Elf admin, on the other hand, will check that the application is running as expected. So if you make a change that breaks the application somehow, he will let you know so that you can roll back and try again. In combination, they will tell you if your changes solve vulnerabilities while avoiding altering how the app is supposed to work. So we've got our code editor in black up here and then our elf chat down the bottom. This is like a really cool way of learning this. So to ask elves to do a recheck of the app, scroll down and we can just hit the run check button. So take a look at the following URL by injecting some SQL. I was able to manipulate the DB to return a specific elf record. Otherwise the website is working fine. So if we go over to what elf exploit said, so we have ID of one or one equals one limit for one. Okay. <laughs> All right, now let's get to work. So fixing SQLi injection by data type validation. One of the easiest and most effective ways to prevent SQL injections is to ensure that any data that the user can manipulate that you are concatenating as a part of the SQL in statement is actually from the type you expect. Let's go to our elf chat and click on run checks. So elf exploit should tell you that he successfully injected some SQL by the ID parameter elf.php. Yes, he has. So let's open the file in our code editor and look at lines four to five. So we've got here elf dot php and we've got law and we've got lines four and five right here. So the website takes the ID parameter from the URL and, concat and concatenates it to the SQL as shown before. I don't know why that's still confusing me. <laughs> the ID parameter from the URL. So it takes it from meaning here. So it takes it from here and then passes it through. Yeah, no, I guess that makes sense. We can reasonably assume that the website expects an integer ID to be sent to avoid injection we can convert whatever the user input the ID parameter to an integer. So for this purpose, we will be using the interval function. This function will take a string and try to convert it to an integer. If no valid integer is found on the string, it will return zero, which is also an integer. To clarify this, let's look at some values. So if we pass one, two, three through the interval function, it'll be equal to the integer one, two, three. Try hack me isn't, so it'll sent to zero. If there's a non-numerical value, that'll be removed and only number or integer will persist. So putting this to use, we can modify line four of elf to look like, so we can see here, we just wrap interval around what's already there. INT VAL wrap our brackets around it like so. That way, even if the attacker sends an SQL injection payload via the ID parameter, the app will try converting it to an integer before concatenating it as part of the SQL statement. In the worst case scenario, the strings get converted to a zero, which is still harmless in this particular case. So let's hit Control S on our app, file saved. And this time Alf exploit. So let's go use the run checks. So we've got, take a look at the following URL. 
and this is looking fairly similar. So we've got a lot of nulls, ID 9999, union all. By injecting some SQL, I was able to make the database return number 31337 as the first toy name. Let's control click that and see what we get. Uh, okay, so he was able to actually modify some data in there. So it looks like you just gave a bogus ID. Zero X, does that mean it, he's running hex through it? All right, so this happens because the ID parameter is used twice in ALF ID to form two separate SQL queries, one to get the ALF's information and another to get the toys built by them. Find where this happens and fix a vulnerability. Once you do, ask the ALF's to recheck this and if your fix is correct, you'll get the first flag. So from line 26 down, it's the HTML. So we only need to really stay within these first 26 lines. So the hint is that it's using this ID twice. First time in lines four and five. And if we look through, we can see another query line on line 17. Oh no, that's creator ID. Right, so it's using this same ID parameter. So should this be the creator ID then? Okay, cool. No vulnerabilities were found. Great job. I tried to visit Alpha Exploit's Mickey profile, but got something different than what was expected. Remember, we are supposed to fix the code without altering the way it works. All right, let's go to this link and we have indeed an invalid SQL query. I don't see where the flag is though. All right, so the, the flag is somewhere here. Notice that for most data types, you will be able to make something similar. If you expect to receive a float number, you can use the float val function just the same. Even if values are not numeric, but follow some specific structure, you could implement your own validators to ensure that data conforms with the given format. Think for example of a parameter used to send an IP address. You could quickly implement a simple function to check if the IP is well formed and opt not to run the SQL query if it isn't. Um, so perhaps we still need to use this intvel function around our creator ID. Okay, so that gave us a different message. Instead of elf exploit McRed's profile, we've got elf recon McRed's profile. I remember he was in charge of making trains at some point. I can't find them in their profile. Remember, we're supposed to fix the code without altering the way it works. Santa will be mad. So wait, what if I just revert it back to the ID and run that check? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't supposed to change the ID to creator ID. I was just supposed to wrap intfill around it. Okay, all right. We'll pop that in the flag number one section. Next up, fixing SQLI using prepared statements. So while some cases you may secure your code with a simple validator, there are situations where you need to allow the user to pass arbitrary strings through a parameter. One example of this can be seen in the search bar of our application. Oh, okay, if I drag it out, there's a search bar. So every time a search is done, it gets sent to a search toys.php via the queue parameter. If you ask the elves to recheck the application right now, alpha exploit should have a way to take advantage of a vulnerability in the parameter. If we open search dash toys.php. Okay, let's go over to search toys. So again, in lines four and five here, we've got select all from toys where name like percent get the queue from the URL or description like, uh, so is this like, not exactly, but similar. So here the Q parameter gets concatenated twice into the same SQL sentence. Notice that in both cases, the data in Q is wrapped around single quotes. So we can see that in there, which is how you represent a string in SQL, okay? The problem with having PHP build the query is that the database has no other option but to trust what is being given. If an attacker somehow injects SQL, PHP will blindly concatenate the injected payload into the query string and the database will execute it. So while there are a couple of ways to go about this, the safest bet is to use prepared statements to prevent SQL injections. Prepared statements allow you to separate the syntax of your SQL sentence from the actual parameters used on your where clause. Instead of building a single string by concatenation, you can first describe the structure of your SQL query, use placeholders to indicate the position of the query's parameters, you will then bind the parameters to the prepared statement in a separate function call. This is again just flying over my head. <laughs> 
but it's all right, we'll figure it out. Instead of providing a single SQL query string, we'll send any dynamic parameters separately from the query itself, allowing the database to stick the pieces together securely without depending on PHP or the programmer. Let's see how this looks in code. So first, we're gonna modify our initial query by replacing any parameters with a placeholder indicating with the question mark. So we can see here that we just remove this whole section and replace it with a qu question mark and the same, this whole section with a question mark like our example. So this will tell the database we wanna run a query that takes two parameters as inputs. The query will then be passed to the MySQLI prepare function instead of our usual query. So the prepare function will not run the query yet, but will indicate to our database to prepare the query with the given syntax. This function will return a prepared statement. So we've also switched out this query prepare. So to execute our query, MySQL needs to know the value to put on each placeholder we defined before. We can use the MySQL STMT bind parameter function to attach variables to each placeholder. This function requires you to send the following function parameters. The first parameter should be a reference to a prepared statement to which to bind the variables. The second parameter is a string composed of one letter per placeholder to where letters indicate each variable's data. Type. Since we want to pass two strings, we ss in the second parameter, where each s represents a string typed variable. You can also use the letters i for integers, d for floats, and we have a link to the full documentation for PHP. After that, you will need to pass the variables themselves. You must add as many variables as placeholders to find the question mark in our case. So notice that in our example, both parameters have the same content, but in other cases, it, might, it may not be so. The resulting code would be as follows. So I'm gonna paste that. I'm gonna then pop that just below our lines four and five. So once we have created a statement and bound the required parameters, we'll execute the parameter. We will execute the prepared statement using the STM execute function, which receives a statement of STMT as its only parameter. So again, going to copy that and paste that underneath. Finally, when a statement has been executed, we can retrieve the corresponding results set using the STMT get result, passing the statement as the only parameter. We'll assign the result set to our toys underscore RS variable as the original code. So again, we'll paste that in here. So our final code should look like this. Okay, so that should be above here. Then we have our query there. It then gets sent through to be prepared, uh, this should actually be saved as STMT, which then gets passed through the bind parameter. Then it's told to execute, and then this toys RS will take that execute uh, and the result. So hit control S. If you're asked to recheck the app, they should now tell you the vulnerability has been fixed and give you the second flag. So let's go run checks, and we have got, that's checking elf PHP again. No, here we go checking toy php uh why is it not checking search toys it's elf oh does it just check whatever's open okay so we didn't get the second flag instead we got i can inject sql to force a db to return evan null as one of the receivers of an animal farm even if evan didn't get enough good boy score to get that present you can access here to see what i mean so we have a regular link so we should have a score for a user but then they're a low score uh oh so what did I do wrong? Uh, so I think I think it's just actually erring because this is only looking at toy PHP. So if we just save and close and open this again and run check. We have elf, we have, okay, there we go. Search toys now works. A little bit tricky. I was worried because I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I've literally copied and pasted the code. So we have two more flags to get and I'm gonna do my best to find them myself before I cheat and go watch a walkthrough. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna say, that our next one is going to be on this toy. Can I see anything else? So let's start here. So we have a user or a person called Evan. They have a low score and you need at least an eight. So if we look at the toy.php, we have this same query as before and 
they're just putting in any ID. So it's using this same ID one or one equals one limit four. So if we can wrap this interval function around the ID and we save that, looks like we still get the same issue. So if we look closer, so we're at toy.php and the ID is equal to five, where this is still allowing ID equal to one and all this. So the interval, shouldn't that just get rid of it all? So maybe let's look at our other areas. We've got, if not toy, we have an error. So we didn't get that. Then we've got get the first result. There should be a single elf here. So it then passes through this query to MySQL fetch query info of the creator elf. So we have a creator ID. Is that what it's taking advantage of? Do we need to also pass infel around the creator ID to stop it from passing through anything else? No. So if not toy RS and if not elves RS, we then have this. Then we have get first result should be a single elf here. So the same thing, but we're just getting the elf and not the toy. So we have a from kids. So this is a separate database. So there should be an ID. So I'm gonna try the same thing here again, infel and around that ID and we're going to run it again. All right. And that time we've got the third flag. Cool. Paste that in there. And then we have what is the value of flag four. And we can see here that it's now checking login. So it's automatically going over to the login.php. So I can bypass the login screen here with SQL injection in the username. If you want to try it, just use any password with this as your username. It seems that the login is sending the user and password by a post. So you may want to search for parameters using sent using the dollar sign underscore post array instead of not that I would know any coding at all. Okay, so I think that's pretty much telling us what to do. But let's just copy this and go to this login page. So we can use any password as long as our login is this. So I'm just going to type in password and we're logged in and we've gone to the admin PHP. Crazy. So on the login.php in our code editor, let's look at our PHP code that we've got here. So one, lines one to 22. The hint basically is removing the post um, these four times with the get array. So we have a control F, cool. So we have a control F on post. So find all that and we'll just replace that with our all and we'll just go replace all. All right, we'll save that and we'll see if that has changed. Okay, cool. No vulnerabilities found. I tried to log in as a valid user, but couldn't. Some Something is probably broken. Uh, okay, so maybe we don't need to change it for all. <laughs> Uh, let's just, maybe let's just try it for the first two. I'm just sort of guessing. Hit save, run checks, going down to login.php. No vulnerabilities found, but we still couldn't log in. Maybe we try this, save, run checks. No vulnerabilities, but couldn't sign in. Hmm, so what is broken exactly? Uh, okay, so going over our previous code, we were using the get a little bit different. Uh, we had to change our query to use the question marks rather than the actual username. So I'm going to start with that and maybe we're actually, I think we're going to be doing this whole prepared statements again. Okay, so let's just start small and see if we get a difference by just doing that. Still no go. So I think we have to do the entire. So we'll paste this in and we'll make sure that it is the right. So this time username is equal to first. Do we need to worry about this? And are we changing? Changing toys RS, should this be users RS? So if we comment that out, change it to the right uh, variable. Oh, honestly, just guessing. Uh, so no vulnerabilities found, but our valid login user is still broken. But I guess in this case, we have our two variables, but they need to be username and password. Okay, still nothing. Okay, so I have cheated. I've looked at the walkthrough provided. I'm not ashamed. What I did was wrong underscore is what I thought it was telling us to do. We're supposed to not do and leave it as underscore post. Very confusing. But anyway, we can put flag four in there and we have completed our SQL room for secure coding. Wow, that was quite the room. Uh, SQL is hard. I was optimistic in the beginning and I'm still optimistic. I got to admit that was quite difficult. I'm glad that I've gone through it, but I am glad that it's over and I don't have to do SQL until another room. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you getting through to this part of the video. If you'd like to leave a like, subscribe, comment or ding the bell, I would appreciate it, but hey, no pressure. 
Otherwise, I'm going to let YouTube recommend a video for you. Plus, the playlist is there to the other videos in this series. So thanks again, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, I'm just contemplating life after that. Thank <laughs> you.